Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonso. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at your questions and comments from Lost Weapons Greek Fire. Before we begin, just a reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. Moving right along. Mythology tells us one thing, while archaeology tells us another. Our first question of the day is from Mark. He asks if Greek fire would be something akin to napalm. Mark, very good question. In my opinion, Greek fire is very much the forerunner of napalm. They are both incendiary devices that are liquid-based. Napalm containing white phosphorus will not only burn on water, much like Greek fire, it will also stick to an object and burn through. Next we have a question from Joaquin. He wants to know what kinds of safeguards were taken with Greek fire. Joaquin, unfortunately, not a lot is known about Greek fire. We can assume that every precaution was taken to ensure that, that accidents didn't happen during the course of a battle. Greek fire was also transported on special ships known as dromons. The crew of these ships were responsible for the heating and pressurizing of Greek fire. These crews were not only highly trained technicians, their knowledge was limited and compartmentalized. Each member of the team knew only one ingredient in the chemical makeup of the weapon. In this way, the Byzantines safeguarded the actual formula. Our next question is from Robin. She asked, who invented Greek fire? Robin, opinions vary. However, most historians agree that a Greek architect by the name of Kalinikos of Heliopolis created the deadly weapon. However, this opinion is subject to debate. Moving right along. Next, we have a question from Larry. Larry wants to know if Greek fire can be put out with water. Larry, Greek fire could not be extinguished with water. Don't forget it can burn on water. Another important factor is that it clings to flesh or anything it comes in contact with and will burn through. Next, Neville has an interesting question. He wants to know if Greek fire burns green. Yes, Neville, it does. Historians describe the deadly weapon as a swirling green fluid. It is also important to note that if dropped to the ground and the container breaks, it will create an explosion. Let's press on. Hector asks, how was Greek fire flung at enemy forces? Hector, various weapons were used to launch Greek fire at the enemy armies. Since Greek fire was primarily used in naval warfare, it was launched from tubes mounted on prows of Greek ships. Catapults were another way, trebuchets, ballistas, and onagers. With regard to small arms, grenades and slings were also used on the battlefield. Next we have a question from Rosa. She asks, how did navies and armies combat against Greek fire? Rosa, according to some writers of antiquity, such substances as strong as vinegar and urine could actually put out Greek fire. Others have pointed out that sand could also extinguish the flame. Our next question is from Per. He asked, where did the ancients find naphtha, which is assumed to be the vital ingredient in making Greek fire? Per, excellent question. We actually don't know for sure. However, various writers of antiquity have made the claim that this crucial ingredient was found in Crimea. We still have time for a couple more questions. The next one is from Jessica. She asks, did Archimedes invent Greek fire? Jessica, interesting question. While Archimedes was the mastermind behind many super weapons of antiquity, Greek fire was not one of them. He is, however, credited with developing a type of death ray. Tradition has it that he used mirrors to burn an attacking Roman fleet. Archimedes is also credited with the tactic of launching hollow clay balls filled with some type of chemical mixture that ignited upon impact. Our last question today comes from Wilhelm. He wants to know, why did Greek fire fall by the wayside? Wilhelm, good question. It seems that in the 15th century, Greek fire just disappeared. No one is quite sure why. Perhaps the Byzantines no longer controlled the lands that contained the necessary ingredients to continue making the chemical weapon. Since Greek fire was difficult to control, perhaps better and safer replacement weapons other than Greek fire were used on the battlefield. In conclusion, I would say that until Greek fire had its day, this weapon was the scourge of the ancient militaries. 
This brings us to the end of Lost Weapons Greek Fire. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Traveler's Tales. Just a reminder, we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. For your convenience, we have also posted our email address and Instagram information. We love hearing from our subscribers. Don't hesitate to contact us with any questions or comments you may have. If you haven't subscribed to Traveler's Tales, please do. This really is the best way to help our channel grow. Traveler's Tales will return with The Birth of Rome. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and fact, Cartistos.